Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full review, strip down, maintenance test, and spray test on the Harder and Stingbeck Infinite CR Plus 0.15. Alright guys, welcome back. As I say, in today's video, we're going to do a full review and look at the Harder and Steenbeck Infinitec CR Plus. I'm going to give you a bit of info about this brush, my thoughts about it, my personal experiences with it, um, and an in-depth spray test, maintenance check, and a full strip down on this. I'll give you the full workings on this brush. I first purchased one of these brushes this is going back a long time now. I started off with, my first ever airbrush was a De Vilbris Aerograph Super 63. I picked that one up. And then the second airbrush that I ever brought was the Harder and Steenbeck Focus, which was a 0.2. Cracking brush, used it for the beginning parts of my airbrush career. And then I moved on to the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Solo with the air just on the bottom. And then I wanted a detail brush. And at the time I was umming and ahhing on going to Iwata because I'd been with Harder and Steenbeck for quite some time. I opted for the Infinite. Got the first generation Infinite, which was the 0.15. Can't knock the brush because I started out with it and it got the things I wanted to do down, the details. That was when I was starting my portraits and just working into portraits. So I always picked up the Infinite. Uh, I was using it for automotive. I was chucking every paint source through it. At the time I was using a lot of solvents, so I was hammering solvents through it. And on the first generation Infinite, it stripped all the plating on the inside of the body and inside the cup. I did notice that. I noticed on the, the nozzle caps inside, they're brass. I went through a few of them because they're quite soft. Needles, I went through a few of them. But other than that, the brush performed and in the end, that body just deteriorated and I ended up stripping it down, brought a new body, which is the CR Plus, which I think is a better coating on the chrome finish, on the brushes. So I replaced that, and that is how that brush is today. So it's basically a brand new, it's got a brand new needle, brand new nozzle, front end setup, all the internals, the Teflon washers I've replaced. So this is basically a brand new brush, and this is probably, the first time I picked this brush back up in five years, I don't use it anymore because there are, I've got better brushes. There are better brushes on the market, cheaper brushes that are better than this. So this will be my first time picking this back up on the spray test. It just sits on the shelf. I don't use it. I've got the Evolution Solo and that's a 0 0.2, another good brush, but I don't use that now. Now I've got the, Creos range and the Iwata, straight to them. If you pick them, any of them two brushes up, you'll know the difference straight away. They just, I mean, the Creos PS270 will wipe the floor with that. My personal uh, opinion on comfort. You've got your Mac valve on it. So I prefer that brush, hands down to this. Uh, but they are a good brush. I can't knock harder and sting, but I've had a I had bad experience with them with the uh, call to paint as I ranted on about in my last video and that's what steered me off then. Um, I picked this up this morning and just gave it a little blast through before this video and give it a little test and I do not like the triggers on these. After using Iwata and the Griots, these triggers feel, me personally, they're too high up it really feels like your, your fingers are right off the brush. Um, to me, it just feels uncomfortable. Compared to these other brushes, when you're sitting with something and you've got a brush in your hand for five, six hours, 
If I was five, six hours on this again now, it, I couldn't do it. After going from these brushes that I've got and the comfort in them brushes and the details that them other brushes can put down, I wouldn't buy one of these again. So as I say, this just sits on the shelf. But I'm gonna do you a full review on it. I can't knock it because I started my career off on this brand and if you're a beginner, you could go the same way. Um, I, I can steer you in another way, but they're a good brush. They last, they'll get your paint down. As you'll see in this video guys, when I do some spraying, you'll see how well this can put paint down and it can. You can get super fine with it, but we'll see that later on. So I'm gonna start the video off on a maintenance and strip down of the Infinite and just show you how easy that is. One good thing about these brushes as well, they're so easy to strip down and maintain. You could probably do this blindfolded. I probably can strip it down blindfolded, but I'm not gonna try that on the video because I'll probably spike myself with a needle. So yeah, I'll see you in the strip down. Right guys, I've got the bins on so I can see because this is going to be quite up close. I've got two cameras set up so you'll see me talk through on this one and I've got a smaller one down here. As you can see, we've got the brush and the first thing you want to do when you want to strip these down is unscrew the back, take that back piece off like that and then we've got this chuck at the back here, undo that and then you can slide your needle out so put that to one side. You can then take the cup off, like that. This is quite dirty, so we'll give this a clean. Which leaves you the body and the pieces like that. You can take the cap off the front there. So that's that piece, that little prong cap. Put that to one side, and then you've got that piece. That piece can unscrew. And then when you take that off, You've got your little cap inside there. You can take that out like that and like that, which will leave this. To get the trigger out, pull back on that chuck and the trigger will slide out there. Take that out. You can then undo that part of the body and take that out like that. So you're left with that piece a little bit of mucky paint in there and a bit dirty in that cup. This is where your spring sits. So if you want to take that piece apart, take that off like that, slide that out and your spring sits inside there like that. So that's the strip down of the Infinite. Now the way I'd go about this on maintenance and cleaning this brush get yourself some paper towel some little cotton ball, ball pads cotton buds and you can get these these are dentist brushes that got like the little pipe cleaner on they're really handy so get one of them i've got some water to flush it through and i've got a little bit of thinners in a pot so we'll start off with a needle get yourself a pad get your needle Drop a bit of thinners on a pad like that, and then just pinch your needle and twist, and that will clean your needle down like that. And you'll get your, you'll get your paint off the needle like that. So that's nice and clean. You can drop that to one side. This piece, give that a little wipe out with thinners. Give it a good clean. That bit can be cleaned with thinners. You can wipe all the trigger down with it because sometimes you'll get a bit of paint on there. So you can clean all that back. So that's that bit, put that bit aside. Same with the cup. You can soak these in thinners if you need to. We'll just give this a wipe over with thinners for the video. that one. The body, again, if you need to and it's got paint on it, 
bit of kitchen towel. Just give that a wipe over the body on that. That will clean that up like so. So you've got that bit nice and clean, that can go to one side. The actual body, if you've got really gunked up paint in here, I would soak the front end up to about where the N is on the Infinite and just stand that and soak that. Don't drop any thinners down in this piece because that's where your air valve is and it'll just destroy that piece. So if you drop it down to where about the N is, stand it up, let it soak, and then when you're soaking it, grab your cotton buds, get your cotton buds, give it a clean in there. Gotta be the painting. Clean it all around there. Because that's a Teflon washer there, so that won't be harmed with thinners. Little buds around in here. Like so, with the cotton buds. This really does need soak, but I'll get it clean enough so we can do a spray test. So you've cleaned all that. You can wipe the bodies down with thinners on a bit of rag, like that. So that's nice and clean. That piece can have a little wipe over, a little clean in here, bit of rag, and just give that a little buzz round, clean on there. These, you can get the tooth piece there and you can just go in there with it and clean out any debris. You can soak these as well. Give them a soak and just push that through, clean that. Like so, that's, you can see all the muck that's in that one. So we'll just say that's fully clean. Same with these, you can soak these as well and you can get cotton buds and give them a little clean in there, like that. So that's the cleaning process. There's paint everywhere now. Now when it comes to maintenance, you can buy this, eBay, Amazon, and it's a super lube, it's an, it's an eye water super lube. And when I put these brushes back, I will tend to start off with this. And I will just drop some of this on here. Along there, just smooth it all in. Drop that in there. So that's got like lubrication all on that thread, all round on there. Not going to put loads on it. So you've got that back in there with the spring. Push that through. Put that piece back on. And that will just hold that in place now. So you've got that. And that's all nice lubricated there. So that piece can go back in the body. And that will screw in there nice because you've got a bit of lubrication on that thread. Give that a wipe off. And then to get your trigger back, if that's picking out, you see when I pull that back, that's just moving that in there. You get your trigger on these, like that. And that piece will be facing forward. Let me try and do this with two hands and show you. You'd face that forward, drop that in there, and that bar that has pulled back goes through that. It usually goes through that, that's it. That bar that you've pulled back will go through that gap on that trigger and now that trigger's down, so that won't come out. And you just rebuild the front end the same. You would then slide that back in there. Make sure you don't lose that Teflon washer and make sure that washer's nice and clean 
and not crushed in any way. You can you can buy these kits with all the washers in. So you drop that back in, tighten that right up. On these you usually get a rubber washer that sits between the body and that, but it works fine. If, if you, that perishes and you lose it, it's not a problem. Then you can slide that one back on, like that. Back on, so it's like that. You've got no needle in this at the minute, so you like that. I would drop a little bit of the super loop just on that part of the trigger there. So that gives that a little bit of lubrication when that's being pushed down and moved on that bar. When you move that back, you can see that bar moving up that trigger. So that lubricates that, so that makes that nice and smooth. Get your needle, drop a little bit of the super lube on the back, pinch it and just do that. Not right to the front, just down to about there. Do that with the super lube. Guide that in. And then when you push the needles in, just push it until you feel it touch that front end. Once you get like that, just keep your finger there and just tighten that chuck up at the back. And that's your needle in. Drop your body on the back. Have a little check to see if your needle's moving when you do that, which it is like that and you're good to go so they're as simple as that guys on these really really a simple brush to strip down clean and maintain so that's how i'd do it people will probably do it different ways but that's how i'd strip a hard and steam it down it works for me and as i say i've had a lot of these brushes and They've lasted, apart from that first one that I had where, because I'm doing loads of automotive and I'm using solvent, it stripped the plating of the internals. And I think that's why Harder and Stingbeck redone these and done the CR Plus, which is a better coating on these bodies. And I've not had any trouble with this one. So that feels lovely and nice little maintenance blast through it. It feels really smooth now. That trigger feels nice it just feels a lot smoother so i really would highly recommend picking up some of the i water super lube it's great stuff it's a i don't think it's got silicons in it yeah no silicon non-toxic brilliant bit of kit well worth having you get it when you purchase an i water you'll get that in your kit you don't get things like that with a hot and sting but so yeah, if you can get hold of some of that stuff, it's well worth it. So that's my maintenance check. I'll see you in the next stage. I'll get the airline set up, we'll drop some paint in this, and then I'll give you a little show on what this brush can do. Coverage, detail, bit of shading, and things like that. See you in the next step. Right guys, I've put the airline on. I'll drop the bins back on so I can see. I think we're running this about 20, 22 psi on this. Give this a little, little blast through the water. And we'll just do some simple tests on this. I'll show you the sort of detail you can get down on this brush. I'm taking the prong cap off the front. Don't like working with that on. And uh, when you get your tip dry, as we all do on these, on every airbrush, get yourself two toothbrushes, two soft toothbrushes, put the heads together, so you've got both bristles together, drop a bit of masking tape around the body, and then just put a bit of either water or cleaning fluid on the toothbrushes, and then you can just rub the front of the brush down it, job done. You've not got to try, keep pinching it, just a quick wipe down with that and that'll get rid of it. And it saves you because sometimes you can do that and you can dink your needle with your fingers and you can bend it. So just run it down the toothbrushes, job done. So we're gonna try a bit of old transparent shading gray. Now 
that's flowing right. So we'll do a little dot test. I'll go small and I'll do full back on the trigger. This is the 0.15, so it's a real small needle setup. So you will get real fine detail down this, guys. So if we start on the dots, and that's probably not picking that up, but they are absolutely tiny. tiny. So it atomizes the paint nice. And a little bit spitty on that, because as I say, this paint's old, it's grainy, it's quite thick, but you can get super down with this. You're going right down and you're getting to sort of like that. It's really misting out, but your dots are about that sort of size. A little bit more paint in there. And I'm gonna just drop a drop of water in that. Just bubble back, pinch the, if you wanna mix your paint, you just pinch the front end and you'll see the bubbles coming up in that cup. That's how you bubble back and mix your paint. So I'll just do another dot test again. And they are absolutely pinhead dots and then working your way up again. And going up on the dots. So you can get super fine down on the dots on lines it's the same super fine as you'd expect from this needle and nozzle setup the one good thing with the harder and sting back the infinities and most of all well all of them i think you can change your needle setups and nozzle setups so you could go from, you could turn this infinity into a 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. You just buy your needle and you'll buy your nozzle cap, your fluid cap inside there, that little brass one. You'd buy the setup for that and then you could interchange. So if you wanted to sit on a, me personally, I'd sit on a 0 0.2 in this would be better. Be make it more of an all rounder. When you've got the 0 0.15, you've really got to start mastering the arts of thinning your paint down, getting your paint mixes right, and things like that, because it is a very, very small setup. But once you've got your paint down and your air pressures, I mean, they're super fine, guys. I find the triggers on these a little bit high. They just seem a little bit high off the body. I've got other brushes where they're just more comfortable. I seem like I'm having to put my finger at the back and just clamp that part of my finger into the body so I can get the real tiny hairlines and it's an uncomfortable position for me. If I sit with it over the front, it just it feels like I've got no control over it. I have to sit down, clamp my finger at the back. With the other brushes that I've got, because they're a lower trigger, it's just a lot more comfortable, I've found. I mean, I used to use this brush all the time, and I was obviously used to it at the time, but then when I've gone onto the iWatters and the PS270 by Creos, and felt the triggers on them absolutely wipe the floor with this trigger. And it's got a cup that does that on the top. This trigger really needs to be lower, flatter. If you've tried the Micron where it's flat and it's low, springs nice and soft, it is an amazing brush and the trigger's amazing. The PS270 trigger's better than this. And I'd say that brush is better than this as well. And the PS270 is a lot cheaper than this and the parts are cheaper on it. It's a more comfortable brush and you've got a Mac valve on the front. So that's my preference, but the Iron Steam Mac, yeah, they're all right, they're good brush. They'll get your paint down. They're easy to strip down, easy to clean. So if you've got one and you really like it, it's your preference, it's what you're used to. 
as I say, I've had one of these for a long time, a long time, and went through the Harder and Stingback range. So, they are a good brush. I'm going to drop a bit of opaque in this. And a drop of water to thin this down. And we'll just do the same again. Do some dots with the opaque. And that's just probably could do with a little bit more water in that. That's what I find when you start going down these real tiny needle setups. You've got to get your paints right and your paints have got to be fresh. They can't be grind, grainy in these. You've really got to get your paint consistency right. We'll do a little bit of shading. But they'll do it, they'll do it like every other brush. But I just find there's better brushes out there than this. There really is. For the price as well. I mean, these when they first came out, these I think these are about two hundred pound. Probably a little bit cheaper now, but they're around that two hundred pound bracket, and that's one hundred and sixteen. And me personally, that wipes the floor with that. It really does. Cracking brush, Grios, and there's eye waters as well that I've got to wipe the floor with this. But that's my opinion not everyone's opinion is the same they're probably the big harder and steam back fans now fans now loads of comments slating me for what i'm saying but i'm not slating the brush i'm just giving you my honest opinion and the years that i've been airbrushing i know these i know i'm inside out you just see me strip it down and rebuild it and, and it's working but i just find yeah, Alder and Steam Max, sort your triggers out. You can get a better trigger than this. You really can. Just something a little bit. Just feels like when you're pushing that down, you've got it full down for air. It seems like it's too high up. It seems like that trigger's too high needs to be that trigger now needs to be on top where that gold piece is there that's how low you want it and you want a flatter top and it would make it a lot better i like the idea that you've got this, the tensioner on this piece in here where you can do that you can take tension out of the spring so that can make that movement softer but just that for me, I don't like it. But other than that, it'll do what the other brushes do. It will get your paint down nicely. As I say, I have this in a 0 0.2 setup. You'll get the same sort of detail down, you will. You'll get the same detail down as the 0.5 and you, it'll be a little bit more user friendly because it's that little bit bigger needle set up so you're not going to worry about your paint consistency as much but it works this has been sat on the shelf for probably three years just don't use it but I can't say it's a pleasure to get it back off the shelf because personally I'm not enjoying spraying with this at the minute. It just feels too mechanical in your hand. It's like press your air down till you feel it stop. And it's that it's like you're bottoming that out and it's 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 gotta be bottomed down. It's I don't know. It's because I'm so used to the Iwatters now and the Creos, I just find that they're better. But it's probably because I've not picked this up for a while. 
But as I say, what put me off harder in Steam Deck was that coat of paint and that did it for me. Wasn't happy at all. So I'll never bother with them again. And they're not, these are, these are nowhere near as responsive as a Micron or the PS2 70 or the PS771. For me, it just feels like you've got that little bit of trigger delay with these. It's like you're moving it back that little bit more, that fraction more before that paint gets there. It's like you've got that tiny little bit, see you, you've got that rock on some of them other brushes, you literally, on the eye waters, you'll do that and do that and it's instant with that trigger movement which gets your finger movement a lot less. I know it's only like a millimetre but when you're airbrushing on detail and going down on a piece of artwork, I mean, it's probably because I've not used this brush for a while. But yeah, you can get down with it, but it just, it's just not as good as the other brushes. I mean, I'm struggling now to, to get tiny little dagger strokes with this. It just feels like that trigger movement is so uncomfortable. It just, it's just not, oh, I feel like a total beginner when I've got this brush in me. I'm trying to do some real tight, small dagger strokes with that. And then I can pick up that which is HP SB Plus, and the responsiveness in that is second to none. You can rock your finger on that trigger backwards and forwards and you will get the tiniest dagger stroke. Same with the Micron. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant response. Hands down, I water, kill it. Kill harder and steam back for responsiveness on triggers. And yeah. Definitely. I mean, this will, you can get it, but you just don't feel comfortable doing it. And you, th you don't have that trust in that brush to, you really seems like you've really got to put your 100% accuracy and movement into getting that tiny little thing when you can jump on that brush and you know it's going to do it and you know it, you're more in you're in more of a comfortable position doing it with your finger on that trigger so i had a little bit again about harder and sting back but if you've got one and you're starting out and you've got one of these i mean there's artists that have had these for years and they'll they'll be like Whoa. that they are a good brush you know Arda and Steenbeck know what they're doing. They need to tweak it. If you're going to revamp it, Arda and Steenbeck, sort this out. Everything else, lovely. You've got your dialing bit at the back, you can do that. I like the idea you've got your bit there so you can take your tension off your spring, but sort that out. That needs sorting out. It really does. There's play in it and it moves. It's, to me, there's better responsive triggers than this and you're high up. Me personally, you don't want to be high up here. Because the higher up you go, that's an awkward movement for your finger to do. You're rocking it off that piece. You want to be rocking it off that piece. And just, if you're further down and lower, it's just more comfortable and it's more accurate, especially if you're doing detail work. So yeah, Alder and Steenbeck, lovely brushes, sort your triggers. So revamp it with a trigger, a better, that with the scallop like that. If you've got, it's like female fingers are a lot thinner. And 
they may sit in that little indent better. To me, that needs, or do a brush where you've got a female trigger and a trigger for a male. A male and female trigger that comes in the box because they just lift in and out. So just put another trigger in the box for a bloke that's got flat on the top where you've got the bigger fingers of men and it's like boom and it's done. Instead of this little pointy little trigger cut that just... No, I don't like it. Do not like it. It's just... No. It's just an awkward movement, being that little sort of high up off the body for me. But other than that, I've had me moan again. Good brush. There's better out there for the money. Way better. Um, parts are mm, sort of reasonable. Easy to get hold of, easy to strip down. They'll last you. You can chuck with the ones with the Teflon washers and all things like that, you can chuck your thinners through them. Um, so that's my spray test guys. I've done a bit of dot work coming up, a bit of line work, I've done a little bit of shading. Like I say, 0 0.15. It's a really small needle setup. That needle setup's smaller than the Micron. Um, so you've got to get your paint thicknesses really thin down. Mm. I'd go for a point two in this, would be better. Make it more of an all rounder than the 0 0.15. Unless you're specifically doing me illustration portrait work and you want to sit 20, 30 hours on one piece of artwork, go for the 0 0.15, but get your paints dialed in, get your air pressures dialed in and enjoy having finger ache at the end of them 10 to 12 hours with that trigger because for me it's going back on the shelf and it won't get used actually it's going to go up for sale so if you want an order and sting mech infinity i'll do you a good price on it drop your comments below because i don't use it as i say i've got a lot better brushes than this and I'm not going to use it, I really ain't. I don't use the Evolution Solo now that's got the air regulator there. That sits on the shelf. Arder and Sting back for me, got me where I wanted to go, and then I've moved on. As you do, and as you will, when you air brushing, you will move on from them and you will work up the better ranges and the cheaper ranges that are better. So, which I've done, and I've got the nice selection of brushes. If you look at some of my reviews, the ones previous to this, you will see um, what these other brushes can do. So that's my review for today, guys. I'm gonna do, the next review that's coming up, I'm gonna do you a, it's gonna be a review on an iWater compressor that I've just picked up. And it is a cracking little bit of kit. So I'll show you some brushes through that. We'll chuck the PS290 through it, because that needs a little bit more air pressure, and that's a great gun for coverage. So we'll try that on it. I'll try a detailed brush. I'll chuck the infinity on it so you can see the infinity running through it. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe, press that notification so you can see more up and coming videos on Dread Effects Custom Paint. Thanks for watching. See you in the next review.